I used to drive the car everywhere. You know, I had a ski wreck, we'd go skiing with it. I thought nothing of going out and just driving it anywhere I wanted to go. But I, and as time went on, you, you fi figure out that maybe I shouldn't be driving this car that much. My name is Stephen Jones and I've owned my 66 912 Porsche for 48 years. I purchased it in 1973 in Palo Alto, California. What really got me interested in Porsches was back in college when one of my very good friends had a 356. We used to drive around in that all the time. Girls came up and wanted to talk to you and you know, it was just, it was a good eye catcher for, for people to watch. And I liked how the car ran and it was a fun car to drive over to the beach and back. When we graduated from college, we said, let's, you know, three of us got together and said, let's take a trip and uh, go to Europe for six months or so and see how things are done over there. Driving on the Autobahn and around all of Europe, the Porsches were all over the place, so I really had the fever when I got back and started looking. I purchased it from a naval officer that was stationed out at Moffett Field who was being transferred and wasn't taking the car with him. And it, uh, that's how I, I, I found the car. When I first started talking to the guy, he, he was asking uh, th about $3,000 for the car. And after looking at it and test driving it and seeing what the mileage was on it. I, I made an offer of 2500 for it and he accepted it. So it, uh, I got a pretty reasonable price for, for the car. I went in the service and during that time I drove it, got brought down to Florida after I got out of, out of basic training and was commissioned a, a naval officer. My parents drove it down there for me. From there I moved to Texas for the next phase of flight training. And uh, so I had it there. And then from there, I was stationed at Moffett. I flew P3s for in the Navy at Moffett Field, which I was kind of right back at home. So it, it has been around. I left it in California. At that point, at my mom and dad's house, and it, it took over their garage. 98 or so, I brought the car out and started doing some of the refurbishing, which was the paint. I did all the, had the paint, did the interior. When I picked it up from my parents' house, I mean, it was in good condition. We used to put a cover on it in, in the garage, and I guess it had gotten some moisture on it, so it, it, had, it had checked the paint on the roof. And there were uh, several places where I had polished through the paint, and I was down to the primer. I mean, all the storage, it didn't do it a whole lot of good, but it kept it operational. I brought the car to New Mexico and started refurbishing it. That took me about three, three years of having it all apart in my two-car garage, which only one car could get in because I had Porsche parts laid out everywhere. So it was time for it to get painted when I brought it. There was no rust on the car because it's a California car. So it, it, uh, it basically needed to be sanded down, reprimed, and painted. The guys that did the car, painted the car, Quant's Automotive, they're a, a body shop here in town in Albuquerque, and talked to them about painting this car and, and gave them kind of an unlimited amount of time they could take to paint the car. Not unlimited funds, just unlimited time. And, and I was lucky that they had an, an old uh, German painter there who just fell in love with the car. He just did a magnificent job on the car and it wasn't all that expensive. It was a $5,000 paint job. The paint now is about 15 years old and it still looks just like the day it did when it came out of the shop. Dashboard was out, all the glass was out of the car. 
and uh, I, I recovered the dashboard because it had a, a big crack in it. I put all new carpet in. I recovered the seats because the old seats were made out of horsehair and, and that kind of stuff. You, you had to get foam to take the place of some of the horsehair because it had gotten compacted down so badly. So um, and then the back is all recarpeted and I redid all of the, the package shelf is all re recovered. The side panels are all recovered. The only thing I didn't recover were the door panels uh, because they never got sun, any sun, and they were they're in good. They were in good shape then, and they're still in like new condition. So I, I did it all. There was I didn't have. I put a new headliner in, and and all of it. So it was as long as the glass was out. It that's a pretty easy job. You, you just had to be very patient and and uh, go about it slowly. Nothing got done. You couldn't do it in a hurry, or you. would if you did, you you made a mistake. Everything was pretty much back together again on the car when I was doing the early restoration of it, the interior and the paint job and all that. The next major thing to do was to have the engine redone. I moved from in Albuquerque out to Corrales and had um, bit gotten affiliated with Roadrunner PCA, and at that point, I ran into uh, a guy named Russ Kelso, who who does exclusively Porsche work, and found out that he lived like a half a mile from the house that I bought. I took the engine over to him, and he rebuilt the engine, making it an 1800cc engine, putting in a stepped-up cam and redoing the carburetors and redoing everything. Performance-wise, it went from a 90 horsepower 1600 engine to just about 110 horsepower via the 1800 cc's and the cam and, and the carburetor redone and being retuned and re having the distributor recurved plus a Bursch free flow exhaust system. I got active in the Porsche Club and uh, the guys are doing drive outs with them and, and um, things like that. So to make the car handle better, I, I've been talking to all these people about what would make that happen. And they said to lower, if you lowered the car a little, it would handle a lot better, flatten it out in the curves and, and you would just enjoy driving it even that much more. So during all the suspension work that I was having done, um, I, I had them lower the car. So it got, it got beefed up suspension plus being lowered. The car just handled that much better. So going on drive outs with, these, with the other guys, it, it made it handle and you could keep up better. The driving experience of the 912 versus the 911 is obviously the horsepower differential. This only has 90, little over 90 horsepower, and the 911 at that point had 130 horsepower, which gave it quite a big boost. But the stability of the car, because it's only a four-cylinder engine, there's not as much weight in the back of the car, so it's more balanced than the original 911s and easier to control through the turns because the back end does not want to get away from you. It's a car where you, you have to drive with momentum. In other words, you can't let off on the speed. You have to keep your speed up. It's just a lot of fun to drive. I mean, it's not like you're blazing fast, but it's a fun car to drive, especially on mountain roads. To keep up with 911s, you gotta play the game pretty well. It became a part of me. The longer I kept it, the more I wanted to keep it. It, it just, uh, I, I liked the car so much that I, I couldn't see myself ever getting rid of it because it, it just became, like I said, a part of me. And I have such a history with it, doing a lot of the work on it, you know, it, you just can't get rid of something that you put a lot of time into. The car has uh, appreciated significantly from what I paid for it. It's not my intent was to 
to uh, keep the car until it got expensive. I had no idea that it was going to ever get as pricey as they are now. So it was more about just keeping the car because I liked it and it was a lot of fun to drive. 